Lungisa, I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to ask you a very business question, because I'm sure you're really tired of National Treasury questions. <laughs> Can I ask you a real business question? Your business landscape, um, what you're seeing for the year ahead, I guess, you know, in, in my mind, one of the things I'd be interested in commenting is, is I'm getting a refrain from business that says there's BEE, -E, and this is not BEE, BEE, -E, and AE, which is what we think business looks like before elections, at election date, and after elections. I don't know if that's significant <laughs> in your, in your um, planning, but a sense for us on what you envisage the year ahead to be looking like from a landscape perspective. I mean, in, just in the first instance, I think that it's, it's good to make the point that most of South African business, and I'm not talking just the financial services sector, which is where I am, uh, but I'm speaking for business more broadly because one, one of the nice things about being in the financial services sector, certainly banking, is that you have got a view of the entire business community because you bank them. <clears throat> I think that South African business is in a very strong position, uh, most of it, I'm talking averages, healthy balance sheets, uh, some businesses cash piles, uh, and and unbelievably, and again I'm talking averages. Some of the businesses have been able to make reasonably good uh, amounts of money by all sorts of measures, headline earnings. Uh, are we allowed to say growth. ethical measures here? Uh, including those, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, including those, because anyway, let me let me not be distracted. <laughs> I'm saying that the, so, so the, the, there is that one side of things, but the the business environment in the South African context is a bit tough uh, because there are a, a number of policy areas where there is unfinished business. Um, so it would help a lot for that unfinished business uh, to be completed very quickly. Uh, that would unleash a lot of pent up, you can even call it uh, a demand for, for, you know, there are people who are looking to invest in a number of areas, but there's always just that one thing that stands in the way of it. And we can talk later on about what some of those are. Uh, whether if you're in mining, it will be the mining charter. If you're in the ICT space, it's uh, the spectrum stuff. If you are in any business that involves matters relating to land and land rights, it's uh, the expropriation without compensation stuff. So they, they are those things. Whilst they don't amount to a crisis or a hostile environment, they just create that little bit of, uh, in some instances, doubt. Mm. Should I take that last step and commit? Mm. When you then look beyond, let, let me add this last point on South Africa, the consumer is, uh, by the way, not in a very bad state, in a sense. I mean, sure, uh, the taxes, uh, the increases uh, in, in the fuel price, uh, you know, a couple of things on that front uh, do put a bit of a damper on, on consumer demand. But if you look at uh, household indebtedness, uh, just household balance sheets, uh, they, they are healthy at this point. I'm, again, I'm talking averages. Don't lynch me and say, but in my case, uh, just yesterday I received that letter. I'm talking averages. Businesses, South African businesses that have ventured into the continent, which is the last point I will make, are in a really strong position to grow. Um, and I see this uh, from our, our own bank, and I see it in relation to the clients that our bank banks on the continent. Uh, the opportunities are immense as a drive to invest in infrastructure, in energy, uh, different components. Um, <clears throat> so, so businesses that have ventured into the continent, especially those that have not been tentative about it, uh, but have decided to go both west and east, 
uh, are, are poised to do very well because that helps them kind of diversify uh, their, their investment portfolio uh, between the countries that are, I call it oil dependent economies, mineral resource dependent economies, but also be in economies <coughs> that have got a mixture, agriculture, manufacturing that's coming up, uh, and so on and so forth. And you can see the growth rates in those economies. It's not double digits, uh, but it's, it's healthy. It's a lot higher than our projections. E exactly. Uh, yes, they may say off small bases, uh, but it's there. You can't say that uh, uh, every year and every time. Uh, and it's good to be there uh, early before the big uh, takeoff. What makes these opportunities on our continent uh, better now than ever before is the reasonable durability of the political systems on the continent. Uh, yes, you still get um, uh, political, uh, <coughs> let me call it policy environments where you can sleep today, the interest rates are market determined, you wake up the following day, they are capped. Uh, you can wake up today, uh, you were in court, and tomorrow there is a fine, and not only has it been imposed, uh, they don't even wait for you to take it to the next or higher court. They somehow take it from your from account. Your account. Uh, I mean, you, you, but if you, if you are a coward, if you are too finicky, if those kinds of things uh, unnerve you, you can't do business on the continent. You, you, you must go in and not hesitate, but in a calculated way as a business person. I'm hearing, I'm hearing a be bold, be brave, yeah. be African-centric <laughs> narrative. Uh, I'm going to come to you, Temba, and then I'm going to come to you, Michael, so I'm just, I'm just teeing you up. Are your consumers in a good space? What's your landscape looking like? And please give me a comment on uh, the digital fervor and fourth industrial revolution and how we deal with that when we're dealing with all these politics in the room at the same time. You're asking me? I am. <laughs> uh, I don't know whether... We are a proper reflection of the general consumer, but our clients have been very resilient. In fact, what we are seeing is that we are gaining new ground. Uh, if you look at the numbers, particularly of Discovery Insure, they're very clear and indicative of a business that's growing, a business that's becoming profitable, but also perhaps intertwined with your other po uh, point of uh, the fourth industrial revolution, the play on technology, the ability to use data in a very deliberate and very focused way. Uh, it's manifesting in our business and showing clear results. Uh, I know a lot of people, when you do these things at, the, at its infancy, they would typically think of it as uh, gimmicks. But as we look at the behavioral change, uh, which is what we focused our energy on, and a lot of uh, studies and a lot of work uh, on how to change consumer behavior, in a positive way, you do see the results, and they're showing in the numbers. Uh, the announcement of today's numbers uh, uh, for our business is very indi indicative of a business that's not just uh, doing things that are gimmicky on the sidelines. Mm. So from that point of view, uh, there is, of course, when we look at our competitors, because we do look at our competitors, uh, the, 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 the lapse rates, they are showing that the consumers are under stretch, uh, overstretched and uh, you, you can see the kind of behavior that's manifesting there. Uh, of course, uh, climate change, a lot of people probably don't want me to touch on this. Uh, the fires in the Western Cape, uh, Nisna fires, uh, you look at uh, what's happening with, uh, even in Johannesburg with the floods uh, uh, in the high felt areas. It's it's very clear that there are many moving parts that as businesses we need to be alive to and be very responsive and be bold to tackle those issues. It's no longer just a nice conversation because it's a green conversation. It's, an, it's a conversation that's actually resulting into financial impacts, particularly to us as insurers, as people who are in the insurance industry. But having said all of that, what pleases me is that... Uh, there are many very practical interventions that I'm seeing, not just from ourselves, but from our competitors as well. I mean, there is also a collective effort uh, by the industry 
to deal with uh, issues of climate change? Uh, how do we assist government with infrastructure to make sure that the infrastructure is capable of dealing with floods, as an example? Uh, I mean, I suppose some of you might have seen uh, in Durban where there were floods and cars were being swept off the freeway. Uh, Those must be mornings you don't enjoy waking up Not at to. all. Not at all. <laughs> uh, because you think about what happens there. Uh, let's talk about fires, because fires is the moments, where, moments of truth where you could lose people's lives. Uh, it, it's quite traumatic mm -hmm. to think that it's not just a game of replacing someone's house. There is a possibility that someone has died in that process. So there's quite a lot of work that needs to be done to prop up and assist uh, municipalities, certain areas of the government where infrastructure becomes a bottleneck for a functioning and a very safe environment for our people. I'm so glad you raised it because it's something that struck me. Uh, you know, I think as soon as you, you, you leave South Africa, it's always wonderful to be home, but there's a different discourse sometimes that happens. And, and of course, our discourse is very nationally centered at the moment. But certainly, if you look internationally at the business discourse, this focus on the natural environment and the implications and the planning is just something we, we cannot leave out of the equation. So, so thank you for raising that. Michael, when you sit here today, 2019 February, and you look out at that landscape, and I ask you to perhaps compare a little bit to where you, where you were at a year, two, three years ago, um, any shift in sentiment, any things that are looming much larger, any, any things that are receding? Um, so, so firstly, you know, we, we, we bank different clients to what I think Standard Bank uh, Bank. And the state of small business, they're not sitting on cash piles, balance sheets are weak. I think the GDP growth numbers that were uh, uh, given yesterday just tells you that it's a challenging mm -hmm. business environment. Mm -hmm. The number of businesses going into business rescue and business failure rates is a major concern. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, small business in this country, small to medium business in this country has got uh, a, a lot of challenges. I, I saw it, a tweet this morning or yesterday, I'll just read it to everyone, um, talking about small business, they say the economy re remains locked, funding remains expensive, and that's what I appreciate. Banks treat entrepreneurs like criminals, government treats them like fin financiers, and the CCMA treats them like large businesses. And I thought it was a great <laughs> quote, because a small business, you know, on the one hand, they, there's the regulation, the CCMA is just indicative of the challenging labor and regulatory environment that they have to face and the bureaucracy on the one hand. It's not just government who treats them like financiers. I, I meet with a lot of our clients. And last week I met with two, two clients of ours, both of whom wanted to deal with one of our top 10 South African uh, companies. The one chose not to, and the one chose to, and the one who chose not to is, in, uh, is, is doing great the one who chose to deal with them is in serious trouble because they get paid on 180 days and it's impossible to get the money out and they just unilaterally change the terms of the contract. Um, and if you look at the, the many of the major SA Inc. companies, even uh, and, and, and what they're going through, they're trying to squeeze margin and squeeze cash from wherever they can get it. So I think it is a very challenging environment for business. Um, the, however, there are lots of opportunities, and there are lots of businesses, and there are pockets of businesses which are thriving. Um, and you mentioned the fourth industrial revolution. I think that, and you know, obviously the president has placed quite a big focus on that at the State of the Nation address, and which we really very positive about. But, um, and, and you see businesses, thriving businesses, fintech businesses, innovative businesses coming to market all the time, and I think that's very exciting for the country. But... Um, but if we're serious about it, you know, I think we have a million, a million children enter grade one every year, and I think 5,000 get a distinction in matric. And if you don't create mathematically strong uh, matriculants, you know, the, 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 the Googles and the top, the, the top companies in the world today, they are employing um, engineers and actuaries and data scientists, et cetera. And, if you, and that's just the... That's just the that's one statistic, but if you look at all of the statistics around pass rates and university exemptions, we're not creating enough um, 
highly educated, highly qualified people. And I think there's a there's no sh if, if there's no there's no shortage of demand. I think discovery, how many actuaries you guys employ every year, but there's a huge demand for highly skilled um, uh, employees in the environment. But um, there's just not enough supply of that coming through the ranks, which is a further challenge because if we are going to have a thriving business sector going forward, we need a lot more. Um, we need a lot the right more skills. the right skills and the right type of businesses because manufacturers and trading intensive businesses, etc., the ones that we've kind of grown our business off and who we know so well, um, face a certain set of challenges, which mm -hmm. is not just a South African issue, it's a global issue as jobs change, etc.